This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Mile High Ambulance. The Emergency Medical Minute is excited to announce that we are now offering AMA, PRA, Category 1 credits. This is accessible through our online course modules that can be accessed at www.emergencymedicalminute.org backslash CME dash courses, or simply by clicking on the link in our show notes and creating an account. So good morning, everyone. Uh, we'll add today's uh, topic to the list of droperidol, uh, zyprexa, or olanzapine for acute agitation. I won't belabor the point of why droperidol has fallen in and out of favor due to QTC prolongation, but it's back, as you guys know, and we carry it. There's an interesting uh, prospective study from uh, Hennepin, which is where Ricky Dollywall and notably m- many others have trained. It's a big, busy level one trauma center in uh, Minneapolis where they actually did a study. They took advantage of the lack of access to droperidol over the course of a couple of years. And they did this very intense study, uh, pretty impressive. They actually have like a cohort within their ER where they send all of their agitated patients to locked unit so people can't leave until they're medically cleared. And they have full-time staff actually monitoring these patients just for the purpose of this study. And the purpose of the study was to compare IM olanzapine, Zyprexa, IM Zyprexa versus IM droperidol for the control of agitation. So they enrolled something like 1,500 patients. This is in Annals of Emergency Medicine, August 2021. They enrolled ultimately 1,457 patients. The primary outcome was they used something called the altered mental status scale. It's kind of analogous to the RAS scale that we use, but it has to do with agitation. It's a negative four to positive four scale, negative four being completely unresponsive positive four is being the most agitated and then they took a bunch of measurements of folks who got im zyprexa versus im droperidol and they found some pretty interesting data overall they're equally effective at reducing levels of agitation and so they define that as saying they measure time to adequate sedation meaning for the time from when they got the medication to when they were at a score of zero or lower on that scale uh, irrespective of what their score is when they got there so they're equally effective there are some interesting kind of uh, other trends namely Namely, that it took about 16 minutes to obtain adequate sedation, which I know feels like an hour, uh, you know, but it does take a little bit of time for these medications to kick in. There was no difference in the number of folks sedated before 15 minutes, so the, the time to onset really didn't seem to change. If you use droperidol, you tended to get slightly higher scores, meaning like they were sedated under zero, but not quite obtunded where uh, Zyprexa would potentially put folks a little bit lower, like negative three on that scale. And accordingly, folks who got Zyprexa were in the ER longer because they were more deeply sedated from that first dose. Very few and very infrequent complications. There were no dysrhythmias. Obviously, we worry about QTC prolongation. Those patients were monitored and had no issues. Of note, the facility there does not require an EKG before administering droperidol, uh, and that's consistent with a number of different studies. And then finally, there were maybe potentially a few more extrapyramidal symptoms. You know, you get, you, we've seen the tardive dyskinesia or those, those, are, those are a little bit more common in the droperidol group. Oh, and one final important thing, Zyprexa actually had a higher rate of needing an additional medication for sedation. So oftentimes you're having to stack something on top of Zyprexa more often than droperidol. So equally effective, maybe a little bit of nuance to why you use it for certain patients or not. They're similar, but not the same drug, Um, but certainly both seem to be safe and effective for patients with acute agitation. And then the last thing about that is remember, there's been some pretty good studies over the last six months or so about what it means to be sedated. And that means very different things for people of different socioeconomic, racial uh, backgrounds. Uh, And so I think we as a team always just have to be cognizant of the fact that we, we put the patient's safety first, the safety of our staff, but understand that people assign a lot of value and a lot of meaning to being given medication and being administered medication, quote unquote, without their consent when they arrive in the emergency department. I think we just need to be mindful of that and sensitive to the fact that that's a very touchy topic and can mean a lot of things to different people. So we'll be compassionate as we always would be and um, have good options for sedation. So any questions about that study or just kind of the acutely agitated patient overall? Yeah, great question. In this study, the median dose they used for droperidol was 5 milligrams IM uh, agitation protocol, and Zyprexa was 10 milligrams IM was what they used for the study. All right, guys, let's have a great day. Thanks very much. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Health One Continental Division, and Swedish Medical Center for their financial contributions to the EMM. 
Donations from them and listeners like you make it possible for us to fulfill our mission of producing and spreading free medical education to the masses. If you enjoy our show, please consider making a one-time or reoccurring donation to help cover our operational costs and keep the EMM awesome. Click on the link in our show notes to make a donation. Thank you for listening.